Hi guys, I've been asked to do a geometry question with you today. Uh, the question is about two circles that touch each other in one place. We have to find the perimeter of the shaded region, which is the area that's bound between where they touch the ground and where they touch each other. So let's get straight into it. Um, there are three different uh, lengths that we have to find in this perimeter question. We have to find the length of the distance between where the big circle touches the ground and where the small circle touches the ground. And we also have to work out the lengths between where they touch each other and where they touch the ground. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to draw a trapezium um, to help us find some angles. So to start with, we're going to draw a straight line from the centre of the big circle and the centre of the small circle straight to the ground. Now, we can label this. We know how long this is. This is going to be 18. And this one here is going to be 8. Perfect. We can also draw a line between the centers of the two circles. It says that they touch at a common tangent, so let's do that. So now we have a trapezium. Now to work out the arc lengths of this large circle and this small circle, we're going to need some angles. And to work out the distance between like where this uh, vertical line, between that vertical line and that vertical line, we're going to need to um, appreciate that there is a uh, length here, between here and here, which because we are at right angles, this connects at a right angle, it means this is parallel to the ground. So what we can do is we can uh, find the uh, length of the above well, this horizontal line, and it will give us the length of the underneath horizontal line, which we're looking for. So, what is the this triangle that we've just made, what is its hypotenuse? Well, because these circles touch each other at a common tangent, as stated in the question, we can simply just add their two radiuses together. So, the length of this long side here is going to be 18 plus 8, which is 26. Okay, now because these two sides, the vertical lines are parallel, and this is at 90 degrees, using uh, alternate angles, we can also say that that's 90 degrees. And because that's 90 degrees, we know that this side here is going to break this up into this, obviously this bottom part is a rectangle, which is going to have a side length, let me just write it in a different colour. A side length here equal to 8, and a side length here, although it's not drawn to scale, equal to 10. So we've been able to deduce quite a lot of information out of just circle properties, to be perfectly honest. Now, what are we going to do to start with? Well, for me, what I want to do is I want to work out what this horizontal line is. It's the easiest thing to work out to start with, so we'll call it x. And the way we're going to work it out is using Pythagoras. So we're going to say x squared is the, equal to the hypotenuse. 26 squared subtract 10 squared. So x is going to equal square root of 576, which is 24 centimeters. Great, so we can put that in our diagram now. So that's going to be 24 centimetres. Great. Now, now what we have to do is we're going to have to use a little bit of trigonometry to find this angle here. Let's call it theta. Now, the reason we have to find this angle here is because we'll use theta and the radius of the large circle to work out what the arc length is that we're looking for. 
So the way we're going to go about calculating theta is through um, the cosine ratio because we know that the hypotenuse of this triangle and we also know the adjacent side of this right angle triangle. So it's quite a simple uh, task just to say that theta is equal to the inverse of cosine or arc cos in brackets adjacent 10 divided by hypotenuse 26 and in radians that is equal to 1.176 radians. Great. Now, what we need now is we need to calculate what this angle here is. Let's call it alpha. Now, the reason we have to calculate alpha is because we're going to use it and then add it by adding it to 90 degrees to work out what the arc length of the small circle is. So what we're going to do, I'll keep it in the same colour, is we know that alpha plus 90 degrees plus theta has to equal 180. So alpha is going to equal 180, take theta, take 90 degrees. So let's write that down. So alpha is equal to, now this is all in radians though, so 180 degrees in radians is going to be pi minus pi over 2, which is 90 degrees, minus theta, which is 1.176. And that gives us a angle of zero point three nine five radians perfect now what we've got now is we've got that angle that angle we've got all the sides that are necessary and now we just have to work out the two arc lengths so we're going to calculate uh, this arc length and we're going to calculate this arc length this arc length cool so let's go about calculating the big arc length first we know that arc length is equal to the radius times theta this is if theta is measured in radians anyway so we know that the radius of the big circle is 18 and we're going to multiply that by the angle theta, 1.176, to give an answer of 21.168 centimetres. Great. We then find arc length number 2, which is going to be equal to uh, instead of theta, it's going to be r times alpha, which is equal to 8 times now alpha. Now, it's going to be r times alpha plus 90 degrees, or pi over 2, because that arc length is subtended by not only alpha, but this 90 degree in the rectangle as well. So, we're going to go, that's equal to 8 times alpha, alpha which we calculated to be 0 0.395 plus pi over 2 and if you put that into your calculator you'll end up with 15.726 15.726 centimeters okay now that we have all of the information that we require, we can go about calculating the perimeter. So I'll put it up above the question, sorry about that. So the perimeter is going to equal the base, which we worked out to be 24, 
plus the arc length of the big circle, which is 21.168, plus the arc length of the small circle, which we will calculate it to be 15.726. And if we sum those together, we get 60.89 centimetres. So, not a very complicated question. You just have to be able to break down the um, circles and utilise all of the characteristics of circles, i.e. that they have a constant radius and that um, all the angles inside of a triangle add up to 180. If you know Pythagoras and a few trigonometric ratios, the questions usually come out pretty quickly. So I hope my description of how to calculate the perimeter of this shaded region helped, and I'll um, see you again next time.